Hello folks, now over the weekend I posted a very short video about how I created this cyclone effect that you see here. I'll go ahead and post a link to it up above, but this video didn't explain why I created this or what it's going to be used for. I talk a lot about how every level I'm going to be creating for this game needs to have some kind of gimmick, and this particular level is planned to have a gimmick where you start the level in one section and you finish out the level in a different section. It's kind of just a change of scenery sort of level. And I was thinking of what the most creative way I could think of was to transition between the first part and the second part, and what I came up with was the cyclone. I think it just makes more sense just to show you. So as the player, if I walk into the cyclone, he gets swept up in it and gets shot right up, and we transition up into this cloudy sky section. Then once we're up here, the level finishes out. I'm planning to have absolutely no ground or anything like this. You're just supposed to fly and defeat all these enemies like this. Um, and just that's kind of the gimmick of the whole level is that this portion has no ground and you can't really land anywhere except for maybe these boxes or something. Animating this scene transition has two main components to it. The first is this swept up in the wind portion where you kind of fly back and forth and then shoot upwards. And the second is this launch portion where you're just flying straight up and then transition yourself back to the actual player character. And conveniently enough, I was able to utilize some old code in order to make this process a little bit easier and more streamlined to create. In an earlier video, I talked about how there's a transition object where you can fly down from the sky and land. Uh, basically, I used the exact same code from that entrance object that I talked about before. And here's the code for that. Here's the entrance object that I was talking about. It's the exact same one from the earlier video. In fact, I think I still have a comment here talking about how it's just approaching the ground sort of stuff. But what's new is that now you can pass in a type. And what the type is going to represent is which animation the entrance object is going to display. And right now there are three. There's that flight down landing on the level animation that I showed earlier. But then now there's that whirlwind swept and shooting upwards. And then there's the actual launch upwards and then landing on the platform above in the sky. And it's organized pretty simply in this code file. We can see that we have an if type is equal to zone, which is where you're flying into like the different mountains or the plains area, the different hub worlds. But then down here we have another type, updraft. This is the one where it's swirling around in the vortex. And then down below here, there is yet one more called launch. And launch is the more simpler one where it's just shooting upwards and eventually transitions back into the regular playable character. Now I want to show you how I coded the updraft one or the swirling vortex. It's actually very easy. It's just a series of tweens moving the player back and forth and then eventually another tween that shoots him up off the top of the screen. If I scroll down, we can see that immediately it starts with these two tweens. Flux 2, it just starts a tween. First, we're setting the X position to something new, and we're also setting the Y position to something new. If we take a really close look at this animation, player moves right, then left, then right, and then shoots upwards. But even while it's moving left and right, it's still gradually moving up just a little bit, just a very slight rise to it. And that's what this X one is doing. The X is moving it to the right just a little bit, and this Y one is doing the slow upwards movement. And then each of these flux, or each of these tweens, has an on complete, uh, which triggers, of course, once the tween is actually done. So for the X position one, on complete is going to call spin two. And spin two moves it to the left. So it moved to the right, and then it moves right back to the left. Sorry, I'm just realizing that my camera is mirrored, so the directions don't match up, but you get the idea. So now this tween is moving us to the left which is then going to call this one, which moves us back to the right, which is then going to call this one, moves us back to the center, and finally we are going to call this rise function, which is just yet another tween, that's going to change our y position to negative 32, which is above the screen. So this is the tween that causes the player to really quickly rise up into the sky. So again, this is a really simple process. I'm just using a sequence of tweens, calling them in sequence to make it look like he's moving back and forth. There's probably a smarter way to code this, but this is a very straightforward process, and I kind of like how it plays out. It's just tween after tween after tween, and then just does exactly what I tell it to. The other noteworthy portion about this updraft type is that it now has a rotation property. If we watch the animation here, you'll see that the player is just spinning around in a big circle, just con constantly rotating around. And that's what the rotation property is doing. We can see here in the update function for the entrance object 
that if the type is equal to updraft, or when we're spinning around, our rotation value is going to increase by a little bit every single frame, which is what causes it to spin in a circle. And this other portion right here, if self.y is less than negative 24, this is what triggers the actual transition into the new map. Once the player rises up into the sky above the screen, then we're going to change maps to the new one. Speaking of which, that's when we trigger this launch type. It basically just recalls itself to do this new animation where the player is just moving straight upwards and eventually triggering itself to transition back into the regular player object. And the way this works is very simple. You can see that there's not very much going on in this section of the code, but down in update, we have this self.type equals launch. This is where, again, the player is going to be rotating while he's flying upwards, and the Y position of the entrance object is going up. Or in other words, we're decreasing the Y a little bit every single frame, causing him to move straight upwards. And this section right here is what triggers the transition back into the regular player object. Once self.y is less than 82, which is close to the middle of the screen, once the entrance object reaches that point, then we're going to uh, apply a linear velocity to the player. We're going to set the position of the real player back to where the entrance object is at. And we're going to change the player state to 1, meaning the player can now move at that point. And this velocity change right here, I can actually show you in the animation. When the player becomes controllable again, there's a little bit of a boost. The player keeps moving upwards a little bit, and that's what that velocity change is doing. So if we look closely, once we reach the sky portion, right there, the player changed back into the, like, the wings open animation. And it's at that point, the player kept moving upwards just a little bit, and that helps make the transition feel more natural. It keeps that momentum going. And all of these things combined create a really cool looking transition into the sky portion. And I really, really like how this turned out. And from here, it's just a matter of adding more level design to the sky portion, new obstacles to avoid, new enemies, and just different things like that so the player can actually complete it. And I think that covers pretty much everything about this scene transition. Like I said, pretty much every level is going to have some kind of gimmick. And in this case, it's a cool transition, but I'll be sure to keep you guys updated on any other gimmicks that I put inside of the other levels. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please like the video, and I put content out like this every single week, so if you enjoyed, please subscribe. I really appreciate all the support. Thank you so much for watching to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.